Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today we're going to talk about pressure. We're going to talk about gas pressure, atmospheric pressure, and we're going to see if we can figure out how this stuff works. Seems like a lot of people remain confused over pressure itself. They don't seem to understand the difference in absolute pressure and gauge pressure. They don't really know why our atmosphere doesn't need to exist next to a vacuum. And they have a really hard time wrapping their heads around evidence of balloon footage that show uh, what's actually happening. So let's see what we can do to try to address that. Hey, what do you say, Gladys? You can take the day off. I don't think we're going to have a dumpster fire. <coughs> that a girl. Well, let's make sure we understand what pressure is in the first place. Pressure is simply force per unit area. That's all it amounts to. There's the definition right there. What it means is if we have a force, for instance, of 100 pounds and we apply that uniformly to an area of 10 square inches, the pressure will be 10 pounds per square inch. Simply the force divided by the area that it's being applied to. Here's another example. That same 100 pound force applied to a 5 square inch area would be 20 pounds per square inch twice the pressure same amount of force but twice the pressure because the area is only half as large so what's gas pressure well by definition gas pressure is the force a gas exerts on the walls of its container it's literally the molecules of gas bouncing around inside the container striking all of the interior surfaces and that is creating a force and a force per unit area again is pressure but it's not only doing that just to the walls it's also doing it to anything inside the container the gas molecules are bouncing off themselves and anything inside it i put tootsie in there now tootsie's being bombarded by little gas uh, molecules so another way to say that is a force the force a gas exerts on the walls of its container or anything that's inside the container. And here's the way I like to think of it. It's the force a gas exerts when it is contained or confined. It doesn't necessarily need a container. Well those are air bubbles. Those are air bubbles coming up from a guy that's scuba diving. If you'd like to see gas pressure without a physical container there's some right there. Every one of those air bubbles is gas pressure without an actual container. The water is simply confining the gas. That's all. And once the gas reaches the surface, then gravity takes over and it becomes the thing confining the gas. Now I want to talk about pressure scales for a minute because I think this is something that totally confuses a lot of people. We have two pressure scales that we talk about. One is gauge pressure, and the other is absolute pressure. The difference in these two pressure scales is the location of zero. On the absolute pressure scale, zero is literally zero absolute pressure, that point below which there is nothing. You cannot go below zero absolute. Where on the gauge pressure scale, zero is atmospheric pressure so we're accustomed to thinking of vacuum as anything less than zero gauge pressure and pressure is anything greater than zero gauge pressure and that's what a pressure gauge looks like for gauge pressure it's indicating zero because it's not connected to anything that's pressurized at the moment and it's referenced to atmospheric pressure so if we just take one of those things and lay it on our desktop, it will always indicate zero, even though the atmospheric pressure may be varying up and down, it will always show zero. An absolute pressure gauge is different. This is an absolute pressure gauge. They're typically calibrated in inches of mercury vacuum because we're accustomed to thinking about vacuums. This one shows slightly below zero, indicating that the atmospheric pressure is a little bit low wherever that thing was on the day they made this picture. And if we took it up to 10,000 feet, it would indicate about a 10 inch, uh, 10 inches of mercury uh, vacuum. 
just because it is referenced to absolute zero, not to atmospheric pressure. So why do we have these two scales? Why do we do these things? It's a matter of convenience, really. We live in atmospheric pressure, and most of the time what we're interested in is pressure above atmospheric pressure. If I want to put 30 pounds of pressure in my car tires, I want the gauge to read 30 pounds of pressure. I don't want to have to add atmospheric pressure to that. So it's nothing more than that, just a matter of convenience. But let's look at something else. Let's talk about atmospheric pressure because this one is a big bone of contention in the flat earth community. Here's a scale that goes from 760 torr, that's at sea level, which is the equivalent of 14.7 pounds per square inch, uh, absolute, or zero pounds per square inch gauge. Let's hop in the airplane and climb to 35,000 feet. When we get there, the pressure is going to be about 200 torr. Only about 3.84 pounds per square inch absolute. Negative 10.8 pounds per square inch gauge pressure. But let's go a little bit higher. If we could get to an altitude, which of course you can in an airplane, but if you could get to 150,000 feet, the pressure will be about one tor at that level. Let's go a little bit higher. Let's go to... 327,000 feet. That is 62 miles. That is the Kármán line. That's the altitude at which point the control surfaces on an airplane would no longer function. And at that level, we're at about 5 times 10 to the minus 4 tor. Nearly zero. For all intents, you might as well say zero. If we go all the way to the surface of the moon, that pressure will go on down to 3 times 10 to the minus 15th. And in deep space, it drops as low as 1 times 10 to the minus 17th tor. There is no zero tor, as far as we know. We don't know of any practical way to, to generate a, an absolute zero pressure. Just like trying to get to absolute zero temperature just really can't be done. But the fact is, in our atmosphere, pressure does not exist next to a vacuum. Pressure simply decreases until we reach the pressure of space. And the force that is containing our atmosphere is the force of gravity. Demonstrate that, you say? You betcha. Here's, some high, here's one high-altitude balloon that was done by Dwayne Kellum that demonstrates the atmospheric pressure gradient and what's happening. In this particular balloon, he starts off at 289 feet down there on the left, lower left corner, 14.39 pounds per square inch gauge or absolute pressure. Once he climbs to 35,000 feet, he's at 3.84 pounds per square inch absolute. And by the time he reaches 115,003 feet, He's at 0 0.09 pounds per square inch absolute. Our atmosphere doesn't need to exist next to a vacuum, as Flat Earth falsely tries to claim. It, it eventually simply fades into the pressure of deep space. And that's the end of the story, folks. There's nothing else to tell. So I hope that's cleared up a few things. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's those two little buttons right there under the red arrow. And Gladys, uh -huh. we're out of here.